Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Jack Benny in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents the story of a successful bank robbery, including the astounding history of the unhappy man who perpetrated the crime. It's called The Face is Familiar. Our star, in his first dramatic appearance of the season, Mr. Jack Benny. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the world-famous Autolite family. Tonight, we announce the $100,000 Autolite family charity drawing. During the next 11 weeks, all of you, 18 years of age or over, can take part in this greatest of all charitable events. And here's how. Just visit the showroom of any Autolite family car dealer and sign your name and address on the registration form he gives you. Ask him to sign the receipt portion. That's all. Nothing else to do. No need to buy a thing. And yet, you may be one of 25 selected to name the recognized charities that will receive a total of $100,000 in cash on the 1st of June. Think of it, thousands of dollars in cash to be given to your favorite recognized charity or charities if you are one of the favorite persons. So go tonight, go tomorrow, to Autolite Family Car Dealers and sign your name and address to the registration form he gives you. Later on, I'll tell you the names of the Autolite Family Car Dealers who are participating in this great Autolite Family charity event. And now, Autolite presents transcribed The Face is Familiar, starring Mr. Jack Benny, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. I still can't understand why they picked me, of all people. <laughs> me, of all people. That's why it's so hard to believe. That it all happened, I mean. But it did. It really did. Just because I like to go to the railroad station. Walk around, look at the trains, study faces. I never forget a face. I never forget a train, either. But it's easier to forget a face. But a matter of fact, I, I remember some faces it would be a lot better for me to forget. Like Harry Edmonds' face, for instance. That's the day it all started. The day I saw Harry Edmonds way across on the other side of the terminal. That's a station. He was talking to a big fellow. Harry's face I remembered right away. I never saw the big fellow before. But I get going, Harry. But you can't pull off the job. I stuck up a bank before. Yeah, sure, and they'd spot you in a minute you walked in. I know you, too. This is your hometown. Oh, sure. Neither one of us is right. Let the boss decide. Come on. I thought about it on the train down. We need somebody new. We're not splitting this deck with anybody else. It goes three ways now. Look, if we have to, we have to. And if we wait too long, we got to let the whole thing go until next month. And we wait. Not for me. This town is too hot for me. Somebody is liable to recognize me. Yoo-hoo! Harry! Harry Edmund! Who's that? Where? Over there, some guy calling you. Harry, Harry Edmund, you old son of a gun. Brush this guy. Well, well. Good old Harry Edmund. You got me mixed up with somebody else, mister. No. No, I haven't. I, I know who you are. Yeah? Harry Edmund. You used to live on 12th Street and 2nd Avenue. What city? This city. Here. Don't you remember me, Harry? Can't say as I do, so... Harry! Oh, Harry Edmund! Harry! Hey, Harry. No kidding. You remember me, don't you? Seriously, Harry. You remember Pinky Smith? He had a ward on his finger. And Alan Davenport. He had a birthmark on his neck. Well, I'm Tom Jones. I have nothing. I'm clean. Brush him, get rid of him. No, no, no wait. I think we got our answer. Yeah. I think we got the engine pay to handle some of our bank business. Harry, Harry, try to remember. Go ahead, now. Try to remember. Yeah, uh, 12th Street and 2nd Avenue. That's huh? right. 
That's right. Well, I used to live around there somewhere, but I still can't... L- have... Let me give you a hint. Go ahead. Remember Gordon's candy store on the corner? And remember the great bunch of guys who used to hang out there? Yeah. And remember those pesty kids who used to tag along, nagging, nagging, saying, let us in. Can we come too? Always pesty. Always trying to horn in. But one of them was me, Tom Jones. Remember me now, Harry? What'd you say your name was again? Jones. Tom Jones. The name sounds very familiar. We grew up together. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, uh, what are you doing these days? Oh, a little bit of everything. And you? A banking. Oh, money, eh? Yeah. Well, that's a nice feel. Well, I gotta go look at the people. It was good talking over old times with you, Harry. Hey, come on. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, look, uh, you you mind waiting a minute? Uh, what's what's your name again? Tom Jones. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, Tom. Yeah, well, w- wait a minute. Huh? Well, I'm kind of busy. Lots of appointments this afternoon. Oh, I'd like talking over old times with you, Tom. Maybe we could, we could have a drink and dinner. Well. On me. Oh. Oh, well, yeah. Good. Good, except that Joe has an appointment here. Joe, couldn't you break it? Wait here a second. Uh, uh... Tom. Tom Jones. Tom, yeah. Joe, come here. Let me talk to you a second. What? Now I know I got the answer. I know I found the pigeon who's going to do it for us. Let the boss figure that out. I tell you, I got it figured. Look at that guy. Yeah? He is it. Him? He don't look like nothing. Right, he's nothing. Isn't that what we want? Nobody that anybody ever saw before. Nobody that anybody would ever think of looking at twice. Job's ready. And if we don't pull it this afternoon, we lose another whole month, so come on. Oh, Joe can make it. He is going to join us. Joe, I forgot to introduce you. Have you met... uh, uh... It's Jones. For heaven's sake. Yeah, yeah. Tom Jones. Tom Jones, yeah. Well, Tom, meet Joe, and don't get sore. He's a kid I grew up with, Joe. We're going to have a great time talking over old times, you know, Second Avenue. <laughs> That's right, and your name is Tom Jones. Yeah. Uh-huh. I must admit it, it is a difficult name to remember because it's so common. Don't you think so? Oh, yeah, I sure do. Oh, it'll certainly be nice talking over old times. Oh, yeah, I haven't talked over old times in a long time. <laughs> well, well, Harry Edmund. Yes, sir, and good old, uh, uh... Tom. Tom, yeah. Better get started. Where to? I want you to meet another old friend of mine. Harry must have been doing very well. Very well. I mean, for a man in the money game. He had a brand new sedan with real leather upholstery. I know it was real leather because that used to be my game. Leather upholstery. Not much money in it, at least not for me. But I didn't let Harry know that. No, sir. What if he ran into another old friend from 2nd Avenue and the other old friend said... How's old Tom Jones doing? And Harry said, not very well. Not very well at all. Well, that can hurt a man once it gets around. And then what happened? Well, when I came back to the main office, I said, I I want 40% commission from now on. Really? But, of course, that would have made me a partner, the boss said. Uh After all, Harry, I'm not the kind of... A guy who can be cooped up in an office. I've been a road man. The lure of the open road. Oh, yeah. The call of the open streets. See, I'm an outdoor type of salesman. Something of the pioneer kind, you know? Pioneer? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> pioneer, yeah. You see, there are those salesmen who are made for offices and those of us who get out and break the plane, so to speak. Tom, you surprise me. Oh, I could keep going for hours, Harry. Literally, yeah. Well, why don't you hold on to some of it till we have dinner? Oh, sure, sure. Hey, I'll bet you never expected that pesty little kid who always used to hang around to get so big in his field. Oh, I certainly didn't. Uh, we could sure use somebody like you in our outfit. 
Tom. Really? Yeah. Well, now, that's very flattering, but uh, I'm not sure it's right for me. I'd have I to... bet I could uh, get you, I don't know, maybe uh, 10000 a year to start with. 10000 a year, you say? Yeah. Well, I'd sure like to think about it. Well, you talk to my boss. Maybe he can convince you. I'm willing to listen, Harry. I'm willing to listen, all right. The business Harry was in was mighty successful if the home of his boss was any indication. The beautiful big yellow house with a lovely green front door, and you could tell it was the home of a man who had worked his way up and knew what to do with what he had. Inside, it was very homey. Two fireplaces in the living room that looked like they were burning. A beautiful plaid carpet that must have been a real oriental, and they wanted me in the business. Me, Tom Jones, of all people. Brandy, Mr. Jones? No, thanks. Thanks. Spoiling my dinner. Cigar? Well. All clear Havana? Oh, I can see that. I can always tell a good cigar just by looking at it. I know cigars and faces and train. You're a very well-informed man, Mr. Jones. Well, you're kind of unusual yourself. Why? You remember my name. Don't most people? <laughs> most people don't even recognize me. People I've known for years. Is that so? Now, don't get me wrong. It's an asset in my business. See, people who tell me no when I try to sell them something say, say, come back next year. But I come back next week and they don't even remember I was in the first time. <laughs> Believe me, a face like mine doesn't come along every day. I like you, Tom. Uh, mind if I call you Tom? Certainly not, Mr. Uh, just call me boss. Everybody calls me that. Especially people I like. And I like you. I like you too, boss. Then uh, you're interested in uh, coming into the uh, organization? Oh, I might give it a whirl. Let's put it that way. I wouldn't want it any other way. A trial for both of us. And the, uh, the pay Harry mentioned? Oh, I, I told him a starting salary, boss. Well, let's talk about that at dinner. Come on, we'd better get started. Isn't a... Quarter to three in the afternoon, a little early for dinner? Uh, we uh, have a few errands to do. Uh, excuse us, uh, just a minute? Oh, oh, of course, of course, sure. You like the idea? Perfect. Nobody will ever remember him. I couldn't even describe to you what he looks like. Where's the satchel? Right here, boss. I... I thought you put the note inside. Well, we wanted you to okay it first. Here, read it. You are being covered by a gun from two different places in this bank. Do not send an alarm or you will be killed. Put $50,000 in the satchel. That's it. And a note. How will you get them to take it in? I always come up with the answer, don't I? Yeah, sure, boss. Come on, let's go. Oh, we talked it over, and the boss likes you a lot. Uh, uh, for the last time, it's Jones. Tom Jones. <laughs> yeah, well, I was that only kidding, best. Tom. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, we uh, better get started. Where to first? To the bank, Tom. <laughs> That's very kind, but completely unnecessary. I don't need my salary in advance. I told you, this is a high-class outfit. To the bank. Gee. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Jack Benny in The Face is Familiar. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. This is Harlow Wilcox again. Tonight, the worldwide Autolite family is privileged to salute a distinguished member, the DeSoto Division of Chrysler Corporation. So, I've stopped in at my local DeSoto Plymouth dealers to learn all about the wonderful DeSotos 454. Well, you're right about the new DeSoto automatics, Mr. Wilcox. They are wonderful, and for many reasons. For instance, there's the great DeSoto 170-horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine, the world's most efficient engine design. 
Well, explain why, Mr. Dealer. The secret's in the hemispherical design of the combustion chamber. That's where your fuel is exploded to give you power. This design squeezes every last drop of power out of your fuel. But you use regular gasoline for real economy. This, plus DeSoto's fully automatic power flight transmission, power steering, power brakes, and Autolite electrical equipment are just a few of the many reasons why the 1954 DeSoto automatics put you ahead automatically. Thank you, Mr. Dealer. Autolite is proud of its long connection with DeSoto and DeSoto Plymouth dealers everywhere. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Jack Benny in Elliot Lewis's production of The Face is Familiar, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Gee, isn't it funny how you wait a long time for your ship to come in? There I was, watching a train, and my ship came in. Just because I recognize Harry's face. Boy, you gotta keep on your toes in this world. Because when opportunity knocks at your door, you gotta be all set to open it. Well, anyway, I'd opened the door, and before I knew it, we were downtown. To the bank already? I hardly noticed we were moving. And do you mind waiting a few minutes? Oh, not at all. I like you, Tom. Let me tell you, I I like you, too. I'm certainly glad Harry met you after all these years. And I'm glad, too. I like Harry. And I like you, too, uh, Tom. Tom, yeah. You know, I feel like I've known all of you. Just all of you since Second Avenue. Boss, I, I, I even feel like I grew up with you. Oh, that's very nice of you, Tom. Uh, well, uh, who's going to get the payroll? Is that why we stopped at the bank? You pick up your own payroll? Sure, why not? For how much? $50,000. $50,000? And you... you pick it up yourself? It's my money, and I worked hard for it. It's my way. And if you don't like my way of doing things, Tom... No, 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 not at all. I, I've always felt, personally... I mean, I've always felt that people should pick up their own money. Always. Especially if it's $50,000 or more. Besides, armored cars haven't been doing too well in the past few years. I like the way you think. Well, maybe we should all pick up the payroll. But wouldn't that make us a little too uh, conspicuous? Hmm. Yes. And besides, uh, I want to discuss you a little more. I think you'll work out fine. Say, maybe Harry can pick up the money while we talk. I wanted to discuss you with Harry. Oh. Well, how about Joe? Uh, Joe picked it up last time. I don't like the same man going in twice in a row. See, not Harry, not Joe, or you. Me? I uh, hate to ask you. You're not really part of my organization yet, and I... I don't like to see a man work unless he gets paid for it. Well, I'd be happy to. Just delighted. Besides, I'm going to have to get used to large sums of money, and I, I guess there's no time to start like the present. Uh, just take this satchel up to the window and give it to the teller. The uh, withdrawal slip is inside. The teller will know exactly what to do. Fine. Oh, sure, of course. Now, boss, you're waiting until he's in. Did you call me? No, no. Go right ahead. My, my, it's certainly crowded. So many people waiting in line. Yeah. People certainly must be doing well these days. Yeah. I'm very busy myself, you know. So? I have some friends waiting for me outside. Good. I, I was just wondering, if you weren't in a hurry, would you mind... No. If... Oh. These lines certainly move slowly, don't they? Yeah.
Well, he certainly took long enough at that window. Yeah. I hate people who dawdle over money. Don't you? I guess. Your transaction isn't going to take very long, is it? Nope. Good, good. That big bag you're carrying had me worried. Yeah? What sort of business are you in? Penny vending machines. Pennies? All those are pennies? Something wrong with pennies? Oh, no. No, of course not. Excuse me. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll try that other line. My, my, it's certainly crowded. I beg your pardon? I say it's crowded. There's such a big bag. Wouldn't you think they'd have more tellers? Mm, I certainly do. I mean, one, say, to handle pennies and so forth, you know. Well, there's one gone. I like the way that teller works. I suppose. Will your transaction take long? Oh, no. Good. I'm going to... Terrible hurry. Some friends are waiting for me on the outside. Next, please. Yes, madam. Well, in 1950, my husband opened an account in his name, a savings account. Mm -hmm. Then he transferred it to a checking account. Then we split up that money and opened a joint savings account and joint checking account. But we found out we didn't really close the other savings account. Of course, we thought we did, so some of our checking deposits have been... Look, don't, uh, don't you think you should see the manager instead of taking this teller's time? Uh, I'll handle this, sir, if you don't mind. Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. Madam, would you please take this up with the manager? But... If you don't mind, may I get to the window? Well. Yes? The withdrawal slip is in the bag. Oh, uh, a withdrawal. Uh, next window, please. Now, just a minute. You in there. Tell her. Open up. Yes, sir. You see, I've been moving from line to line, and I insist you handle this. I'm sorry, sir. I can't violate the rules for anyone. But this is a very important matter, you know. This isn't just some piddling sum. How much are you withdrawing, sir? Mm, I believe it's $50,000. Oh, you're quite right. That is a lot of money. Now, will you please remove this bag and go to the next window? Well, all right. At least the lines are getting shorter. Yes, they are. Wouldn't you think a bank this size could afford a few extra tellers? Well, how do you mean? Like, say, one kind of teller to handle only pennies and another kind to handle matters of $50,000 or more. I beg your pardon? I suppose that sounds a little strange, but you'd be surprised how it would speed things up. Oh, well, I'm sure. And it needs it. Yeah, I came in feeling fine, just fine. Now I'm nervous from waiting, waiting, waiting. Well, I'll be through in a minute. Well, it's terribly important. You see, some people are waiting for me outside. Next, please. Well, here you are. 20, 30, 40. Thank you. Next, please. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, wait, uh, just a minute. Something wrong? I'll be back in a minute. My friends are calling me. Did you fellas call me? No, no, go back. But someone honked the horn. I saw somebody else go wave. Go back. A mistake. Just turn around and go back. We'll be here. Oh, sure. Sure, of course. All right, sir. Here's the bag. Your deposit slip, sir. Uh, withdrawal. The slip is on the inside. From time to time. Da -da -da -dum, da -da -da -dum, da -da -dum. Is this a joke, mister? Listen, you. I've had enough. Now, you can read, can't you? Uh, yes, sir. Then don't dawdle. Do what it says. That's fine. That's much better. Uh, yes, sir. Come on, come on, come on. Go get it. Well, here's the money. Give me that. Hey! Hey, Harry! Where are you going? Stop! Where are you, what are you doing? Harry! Harry! Bad God! 
got him. All right, Jenkins, take some rope down there and tie their hands. I set off the alarm as fast as I could, officer. Oh, come on, let's get down there. You can show me which one of those guys held you up. All right, officer. I'm sure I'll remember it. Hey, this is terrible. Step back, buddy. But it, it was me. It was you what? It was me, officer. Look, I, I took the bag in and I, I didn't know. Are you kidding? Tell her. Tell her, look at me. I am. You must be nuts. No, I, I'm not nuts. It's me. Uh, don't you recognize my face? Look at it. Nothing like it. Uh, what did the fellow look like? Well, he had a lean face. Or, or slightly fat. Uh, no, lean. Oh. And brown eyes. No. Uh, oh, gosh, I don't know. Uh, it was me. Look, blue eyes, see? Me. And I'm sorry. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Now beat it, bud. Now think hard. I am. But it was the most nondescript face I've ever seen. Well, that's pretty nasty, if you ask me. Uh, tell me what you remember. I can. I was standing there. I, I just counted out forty dollars. Look, and I walked up to the window. Oh, it wasn't you. This fellow was about six feet tall, or five and a half. Five feet eight. I'm five feet eight. And he had a real menacing look. No, no I was smiling. See, look, look, look. I'm smiling. Look. Now, now, now. Do you remember? Now look here. Get out of here before I run you in. Yes, sir. Oh, I remember now. He was six feet tall. He had red hair. And it, he was carrying a gun. He had a handkerchief over the lower part of his face. And he carried a cane. Well, that's what happened. That was an eyewitness account of a bank robbery. From the man who did it. Here I, I walked into the bank, robbed them of fifty thousand dollars, and didn't even know I was doing it. Imagine. Hmm. And nobody recognized me. They didn't know my face. Hmm. You know, I bet I could walk into another bank and do the same thing. Nah. I better not. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Jack Benny. Be sure you take part in the great Autolite family charity drawing now at your Autolite family car dealers. No need to buy a thing. Just sign your name to the registration form he gives you. Ask him to sign the receipt portion. You may be one of 25 selected to name the recognized charities that will share a total of this $100,000 cash distribution on June 1st. Here are the car dealers in your territory who have the Autolite family charity drawing registration forms. DeSoto, Hudson, Dodge, Nash, Packard, Plymouth, Kaiser, Studebaker, Willis, and Chrysler. Visit them tomorrow. Fill out a registration form. Do your part to help favorite charities in your community share in this $100,000 cash distribution. Next week, a story based on fact. The dramatization of one man's deadly way of earning his living. All he needed was the morning newspaper, a telephone, and a gun. It's called Want Ad. Our star, Mr. Robert Cummings. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morovic and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Face is Familiar was written for Suspense by Arthur Ross. In tonight's story, Sheldon Leonard was heard as Harry and Clayton Post as Joe. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Herb Butterfield, Gene Wood, High Aberback, and Stan Farrar. The Jack Benny Show may be heard every Sunday on the CBS Radio Network.